If I have one mission, and that's just to sit down and kind of put pen to paper. It's for themselves! I, I tried to do my best to develop kind of a big cache of lyrics coming into the whole thing. And then not, not necessarily a theme as in like a, you know, a concept album, but just kind of a theme overarching started to develop. We've given him a kind of a, a liberty to be the creative force behind your content. And then the album title came along and that kind of like snapped everything into place. Architects of guilt. Architects of guilt. Architects of guilt, yes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I told my wife about it. She's like, so it's not necessarily hateful, but it is very pointed and disillusioning. And on this record, I think Nick really has a lot of input about hypocrisy and about how we it, it's gone unchecked and it's gone too long where people just kind of put the rug over it and don't deal with the, uh, the true um, evil in people. So it's been cool and I got to use my English degree. So that was fun for the first time since I graduated. <laughs> Finding the vocal patterns for this record was uh, not not the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but also not the easiest. Enough of the cowards! Enough of the thieves! Enough of the tyrants! Having pre-production versions of everything was almost a necessity. And really sitting down, and that's what I was talking about earlier, is just having a cache of lyrics. I can only prepare so much coming into it. I couldn't come into the studio 100% really ready to rock because these songs were still kind of taking their true form. The third orange of tradition is almost a dangerous old This is probably the, the trickiest song on the album. The working title is Pyrithian House. Um, we give all the songs nicknames while we're writing them, you know, before we have lyrics and content and all that kind of stuff, so we know what we're talking about. So this one, uh, Andy calls Pyrithian House. None of us know why. Um, anyway, it's the last one that I have to work on. Um, all the others are pretty much ready, set to rock. This song is just tricky. There's not a measure of 4-4 in the song for the first probably, like, two and a half minutes. So, that kind of presents a challenge from a vocal standpoint, because I want to go through and create a pattern and not just throw, you know, random words on top of random pieces. Um, first of all, just because I don't think that that's, you know, catchy. There's nothing memorable about, memorable about that in well because it's really hard to replicate. So if I wanted to go back in and double vocals, or uh, do it live, I wouldn't be able to do it. So, I'm sitting down right now and uh, just kind of trying to piece together patterns from all the sections and try to find beat inside of the beat. And uh, I've been putting this off for a long time. So I'm gonna have some tea in 51 seconds. Spend as much time as I need to getting this done. And then I'll have a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. And uh, we'll all be in a much better place. Okay, I need to do, I think, the second line of the high vocals and the first two lines of the low vocals. <clears throat> This is, I, I, they should endorse us, it's a um, uh, throw coat tee, it's kind of like an, an industry standard, a lot of the bigger bands have it on their writers and stuff like that, but it's, you know, it's good for, because I'm getting in there and doing things that you shouldn't really be able to do to your voice. Um, 
I'm trying to repair a little bit of the damage while I'm doing it to help me track for a little bit longer. So the, the tea, I mean any tea really, just any kind of warm liquid helps. I'm not doing a lot of talking. <laughs>